for cyclists that come through and could stay there instead of sleeping in tents. Another suggestion was to concentrate on getting the toilets repaired in the adult center hospital, repairing the doors and fixing the building for people that are passing by, for the living historians and for small groups. There is a functioning kitchen and portable fans would help to cool it. Volunteers could clean uh, and paint. A very lengthy discussion followed. It was decided that community council will have an ad hoc committee meeting or ad hoc committee to meet with Allen. The committee was consist of Bill Herman, Francis Bitter, Stephen Fox, and chaired by Allison. I was not able to attend the last two Fort Clark Springs Association board meetings as I was involved with the two golf tournaments. I am not able to give this report as Wally and I will be going to Blue State of Washington until late September and early October. I don't know what any of that means, but okay. Helena, Helena will give uh, a more detailed report at our meeting this coming Saturday. Thanks again for all your support. Have a good summer and stay cool. Kathleen Worm, Secretary of Community Council. Okay. And then I have another one, and it's lengthy too. I apologize. Thank you everyone for coming. Unfortunately, Fort Clark Springs Association Board President Travis Huey has misinformed the membership on a number of issues. A road and maintenance agreement exists between Fort Clark Spring Association and Fort Clark Mud dated 2003. The roads were not being maintained. There is brush lying over the fort and signage is also down. Par 3 golf course looks like a desert and perimeter fence is damaged in a number of places. In addition, Fort Clark Springs Association would like to put the focus on a patch of road on Fairway Circle at the time of questioning but informed President Huey that we were dealing with the number of water leaks that were at priority and had to be repaired. Leaks are not only lost water but also revenue for Fort Clark Mud. In the last two months, Mud has taken their leak rate from 46% to 8%. Mr. Huey has also tried to combine the wastewater discharge permit issue by TCEQ and the lease and maintenance agreement for the wastewater plant. Two complete different documents. Racketville City Council and Fort Clark Mud uh, Board of Directors approved the lease and maintenance agreement in September of 2021. Fort Clark Springs Association to date has yet to approve this agreement. We maintain and share responsibility for the WWTP and the city of Brackettville. This includes the $3.2 million expansion project. Fort Clark Mud's permit has also allowed us to receive domestic water, wastewater, but Mr. Huey stated that in his board meeting of April 23rd that Fort Clark Mud treats the water for the National Guard at the RV park in Del Rio. Fort Clark Mud is not permitted to treat water outside of the district. Another point I would like to address is that our door is always open for the association is welcome to come and obtain the correct information at any time. Sincerely, Felix Serna, Fort Clark Mud Board President. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Treasurer's report. Our gross profit for this month is $193,521. Um, and our gross expenses, which is up almost $30,000. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? <laughs> Try that. Commercial. <laughs> All right. Let's try that again. Our total income for this month is $193,660, <clears throat> which is up almost $30,000 from last month. Our total expenses uh, for this month are $210,768. So, um, and subtracting our depreciation bad debt, we are at a minus $6,407, which 
doesn't sound great, but for a year to date, we are um, approximately over 100000 above our income uh, from last year. I just want to say that our motel income has, uh, where'd it go? getting used to this. Year to date, our motel income is also up um, 100000 more than the year before, approximately. And then, I don't know what This one says 17407 Well, I added back in bad debt and, depreciate, and depreciation, which puts it at 6407 in the whole. Bad debt is, I mean, bad. depreciation is 11000 I didn't, I wasn't here to take it out, but in the report, that's strictly out there. So the bad debt is all going to be collected now? Our bad debt is basically equal to what we already had on the books. So if anything goes into bad debt now is actually what is being charged as bad debt on the existing accounts. So it's only nine dollars. Yep, that's it. He has so much paid in. Paid out. Um, <coughs> the collections are. Um, I really apologize. I get nervous and I lose my place and I lose my mind. Um, make myself lots of notes and then I can't read what I wrote. <coughs> um, and I get to read this paper. Our 30 days past due um, <coughs> out of a possible All of it. I was trying to shorten it for you instead of just reading off a bunch of numbers that don't make any sense. Um, not that I'm making any sense at the moment. Um, our total 30 day past due, uh, we could, out of a possible 8,240 8, that we could have collected, we collected 55.49. Um, on our 60 days past due, out of an outstanding of 4,400, we uh, collected almost 2,000. Um, 62 percent, uh, that comes out to 62 percent of the people that were sent letters paid on their past due account. And then overall, we have um, a total of 300269 in debt that FCSA is currently attempting to recover. 227,439 is currently with the with the lawyers, um, and we connect. We collected a total of 5,593 for this month. Um, that's all I wanted to say for that. That's the question about the golf carts. Are they they're on lease? Yes. What's the lease rate? I can't really say. Per month. Yeah. Where does it appear? For five years. Does it appear on the income? Uh, it's, it's, it's expense, it's golf expense. On the golf, on the golf, it's, it's uh, I don't know, I can't get my sheet. Expenses are down here. Yeah, it being the golf expense, expense is a golf expense. Yeah. Okay. That as well as the uh, greens mower.
equipment and maintenance. That's account 430700 for anyone following along. Yeah. I know. I'm sorry. Uh, I was up too late doing all of this last night. Um, <coughs> That is all I want to cover unless there's a specific question someone has. And no, it's not either correct. That's one of the areas we have to get the account so we have to that. Are there any questions about the financials? Thank you, Lisa. Okay, thank you. Thank you. As always, the financials are always at the front desk. Um, and if you have questions, you can always send those in to FCSA. So we have those questions answered for you if you have anything. Executive report. Thank you. And I apologize for the financials because I am usually a little bit more uh, giving Lisa a little bit better information. But I was I've been gone for the last three days to make sure Sergeant Peterson became Lieutenant Peterson. <laughs> so. I didn't get into about 12 o'clock last night, and uh, usually, you know, there's no secret the fact that our financials are not as organized as they should be. The expenses are correct. It's just a matter of making sure that we put them in the right account, which, you know, our goal right now is working with our new accounting company to get them done by the end of August so that we have everything straightened out between the black system, uh, our new accounting firm, as well as the uh, QuickBooks. So it's been a transition. There's going to be some. There are going to be some accounts that need to be added that aren't where they need to be, but the expenses are correct as far as what we're paying out. Um, I guess I'll start with probably the, the the number one question on everybody's mind: Will the pool be ready by Memorial Day? And I will say no, it will not. Um, the not. You know, I doubt if we can have the flow to be able to get it open. As of right now, the springs, we have done 550 feet of repair around the springs. We have 300 feet left to do. And that is you know, basically fixing all the leaks around where old pipes came from, whether it's from the mud, whether it's from the city. We fixed all those areas. The assessment was made you know, since our last meeting that it's just amazing how many leaks we had once that water level went down and we could see what was going on. So we've gone, we've gone in there, we've fixed 550 feet of the 850 feet. We're getting approximately 50 feet done per day, which means no, we will not have enough done by, to fill that. And I doubt if we even have the flow to get the pool ready. But by the week after Memorial Day, the spring area will be finished and we'll start seeing if we can refill that. Uh, we have the gate still to put on there, um, and I'll let Las Morris do their part. But that's where we are with the spring right now. We did have an arborist come and look at our trees throughout the fort. Uh, the good news is that it pretty much substantiated what I thought, but I, I needed an expert to tell me. He treated some of the trees we had there, gave us information on exactly how we needed to treat to treat the trees that we have left and make sure we, we uh, take care of them in the future, as well as give us recommendation for what trees to plant and where and how. So that will probably start charting out where we want to put these trees in the next month. Hopefully have to be able by the summer to start saying, okay, this is what we want to establish by the end of October. The company I've talked to, the best one I've found so far for trees, um, their truck holds about 200 to 300 trees. So we have to pay a trip charge. So we'll, we'll, we'll get the trees we have, open it up to if any other residents want to buy trees for themselves, and we'll go from there. We also had an energy inspection done by Verity Energy, which was somebody we contracted for our electricity for five years. We have not gotten the complete results yet, but they basically did an audit. As usual, this is going to be a sales thing for them. So, you know, we take what they have to say, know what we already have to do, and see if it's in our best interest to do anything with them. 
one of the areas that I mean, we've had two areas that sort of took us by surprise since our last meeting. One was the fact that the pool was in such, or the spring was in such bad shape. The other is the fact that we had a storm that really did some serious damage to the fort. If you notice, we don't have a billboard coming in from the <coughs> east side because it basically sheared off the three poles that were holding it up. Uh, and also, we had an amazing amount of damage on the mesquite trees on the golf course. Surprisingly enough, we didn't have that much damage in Redbridge Park, which we expected. So it's going to take us a while, and I would say at least two more weeks to try to catch up with all the brush and everything that's on the fort that's down from the storm. Uh, we did meet with our solid waste engineer last week, working on our new cell. I don't want to be overly optimistic, but it was much better than I expected. Uh, Jim was there with us, and Travis, uh, Philip, Sherry. We, we all went out there with the two engineers. And this is the original engineer that did the original uh, cell 10 years ago, 12 years ago. And I, I think it was very positive information for us to go forward. So we're, we look good there. I want to thank Jacqueline and Linda on the courtyard project. Unfortunately, because of our problems with our trees and everything else, we didn't really have the manpower to help finish it. And we'll be following up with that. Uh, recreation, the floor will be installed in the teen center probably in the next 10 days, get that done. One other thing we did accomplish is the restrooms were done in the amphitheater. And I'm not going to say they're 100% done, but the toilets and everything have been completely redone, so they, they work. Now we have to work on the dressing area and get that done. Uh, did buy a new maintenance dump truck, and that's probably one of the biggest, you know, that, that was a big, the yellow one still works, but we're only using it, you know, in, in necessary things, so that's been a big plus for us. We had a golf town hall, which was interesting, um, having new HVAC uh, out at Creekside, so we can start working and transitioning <coughs> over there, and uh, We've started a youth program uh, with golf right now that you'll start seeing some more information as far as getting kids back on the golf course. Uh, as far as our hunt and our security area, uh, we have, our trapper has installed the traps for starting uh, to do the trapping on our axis and that is ongoing as of right now. So for a short month we did accomplish a few things. So that's it. Thank you. Uh, committee reports. Do we have a report from the airport? Yes. Sure. Airport committee report, April and May 2022. The airport was treated for mesquite and ants. $362 was spent on herbicide, diesel, and poison. The airport was mowed as well. There are areas of the perimeter fence that were damaged by the storm that will be repaired over the next couple of weeks. A tree fell on <coughs> part of the fence. The limbs were cut to prevent further damage and the brush was put out for pickup. Our member guests flew in for the weekend trip. One pilot inquired about weekend trip to enjoy the pool and trails, but postponed his, his and his family's trip pending repair of the pool. Stan Martin, Chairman, Fort Park Springs Airport Committee, 74TX. Thank you. Architectural? Don't have a report for architectural paint. Okay. Um, will you reach out to them and make sure that they're aware that they need to produce a report? They, they do send it in, but it may have gotten to Julie too late. I know. Yeah. Golf committee. I have a golf committee report. Uh, this week, the golf committee was awarding one two $1,000 scholarships to Brackett ISD seniors who will be attending accredited colleges or trade schools. We are so proud of our seniors and work they have done in the community. The committee paid $2,500 for sprinkler heads on the golf course. The May end of the month tournament will be on May 28th at 10 a.m. tea time. Prayers for all levels are 
players, excuse me, not players, <laughs> players for all levels are encouraged to play. Respectfully submitted, Katie Brown, secretary. I absolutely pray before I play golf. <laughs> uh, preservation. The Preservation uh, Committee met on May 11th at 3 p.m. in the boardroom. Uh, two propo repair proposals for the service club and the post theater were presented to the full committee for discussion. Uh, we, uh, we had discussed it the previous month also. I'm, I'm going to read you everything as a refresher since I'm fixing to present the proposal <coughs> that I have. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> it's noted that uh, there's additional damage is found on at least 10 windowsills on the service club on the east and north sides. And these get, must be fixed as soon as possible to avoid more damage to the siding on those walls. Water just goes right down through this. When we do get rarely get rain, it, it just goes right down through those holes and sills and, and it causes more damage on the siding. <clears throat> Repair proposal for the post theater includes refastening all the vertical storm drains, replacing bad wood on the front, and tackling the underside ceiling of the marquee to avoid future safety and structural issues. Uh, the marquee is kind of a scary thing if anybody's looked at the ceiling on the marquee lately. Uh, so that's that's the number one thing we need to tackle on the theater. <clears throat> uh, an inspection and minor leak repair of the roof of the marquee is also included in the theater repair proposal. Uh, the replacement of the west side double doors will be done on a separate proposal after a thorough inspection both inside and out. And there will probably be more, some more, uh, going to be have to be some more input probably with uh, other interested parties on the, on those side doors on the outside. Uh, after much discussion of the two repair proposals, full committee voted to accept them and for the treasurer to start work on acquiring funds for the two jobs. Uh, I just uh, prior to the meeting here, I submitted the two repair, repair proposals for your consideration. Uh, of the <coughs> I also like to announce at this time that we have just very recently got a seventh member of the preservation committee. Uh, which is for, probably for the first time in recent memory has actually brought us up to a full seven member complement that has stated in our bylaws and stuff. So it's Mr. Jack Marsh. He's had some experience uh, with uh, historical type issues before and I promise to make the meetings as entertaining to him as possible. So, <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, submitted respectfully, H. Ed Bitter. Uh, any any questions anybody has on any of these issues? The proposal that we have here is it the same as the proposal that you submitted earlier? Yes, but with documentation. Okay, my concern is is that you just said that there's more windowsills that need to be repaired than what you expected. Is that is that reflected? No, that was reflected in there. Okay. This has okay. been going on for quite a while. So okay. yeah, that's why. Yeah. There's no <laughs> real change, at least on this proposal. Yeah. yeah. When you talk about the sills on the surface club, mm -hmm. is that full inside outside? No, it's mainly outside. Okay, because I know there's I I know there's a you're outside and somebody else is inside, but there is yeah dry rot on the inside. Oh yeah, well probably there is probably some of that. We're again uh, preservation. Uh, we're outlawed from working on inside the buildings. We can only concentrate on the outside uh, by our bylaws, but. <clears throat> What we did was uh, we went in and opened up. There's so many windows in the service club. Everybody knows how many windows it's got. Well, there's seals for every one of them. And so we went in and opened all those windows. And uh, we're just, we're, we, this proposal just covers the worst of them for now. Yeah, that's, that's a good stopping point. Can we take that to where we actually do the proposal so that we're all thinking about it as we're, we're talking? Like the explanation, that way that we're talking about it with that proposal. I mean, that's a good, and thank you for giving us the, that kind of rendition of it, but I want to talk about it in full concert okay, when we sure, bring it up. Sure. Yeah, the, the overview is good, but okay. let's keep the details till we get to the actual sure. proposal. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Uh, the recycling, uh, committee was here, um, but they realized that they were short of a volunteer to open recycling, which is open right now, so 
She left me with the report, um, which she gave me verbally, so give me a moment. Um, they have submitted their, so uh, Rio Grande does a um, grant issuance each year uh, for projects that will help uh, the community in different respects. I don't know that it's uh, completely relegated to recycling efforts, um, but some of the projects that they have approved for this grant have been recycling uh, in nature. So uh, the recycling committee uh, has worked with the consultants that we talk to for recycling and giving us guidance on how to sell our recyclables and all that uh, to put together this grant. So they've submitted that uh, this month or this last month. And I don't know when we will hear. It, it, any idea of when that is, when they come back on that? Jim, do you know? Uh, I don't know when it comes back. It's several months until they, they look at it, so it'll be towards the end of the year um, before we hear back on that. Uh, so, Lost Morris Restoration Project, I believe that they left. Also, the same person who's opening the recycling committee. So. Yes, Ms. McBride left this as she dashed away. Uh, this is from Lost Morris Restoration Committee. The committee completed work on the two fill pipes as recommended by the consulting engineer. You will recall that backflow from the pool into these broken clay pipes was the reason the pool wasn't filling and had to be drained the first week of April. These pipes weren't repaired, rather they're blocked to prevent backflow leakage. Also, we repaired the upper and lower end joint seams in the floor of the pool using special material as recommended by the engineer. These two actions make the pool operational once again. Subject to the work that Fort Clark Springs is doing on the drain and bypass channel, as work on the next phase of the broken sidewalk replacement has begun. Okay. Uh, community Council report. Community Council report. Fort Clark Springs Community Council, May 14, 2022. Report for the Fort Clark Springs Board of Directors. Community Council Board voted to your mark $4,000 for startup funds for the Fort Clark Days 2023 instead of $7,500 that was approved last month. We also voted to donate $1,000 to the Preservation Committee in, and up to $2,000 for repairs to the inside of the Adult Center. We're a 501c3 organization and may help with repair of the interior of historic buildings. We discussed repair of the plumbing at the Post Theater, fixing windows at the Service Club, repair of bathrooms at Seminole Hall, and repairs at the Adult Center. Efforts will, will concentrate on improving the Adult Center for lodging for the living historians and cyclists in small groups. It is a functioning kitchen, toilets, and shower stalls. Cleaning and painting could be done by volunteers. An ad hoc committee was formed, chaired by Allison Watkinson, with Bill Herman, Francis Bitter, and Stephen Fox. They'll meet with Alan Peterson for his input. The community council board voted to allow Allison to borrow move. To, it says Allison, but I think that's is it Allen or is it Allison? It is Allison. Okay to borrow movie equipment for a movie to be seen, oh, by the second grade students, and for an old movie about Ukraine. Linda O'Brien will check to ensure that the Ukraine movie is licensed. No dates for either movie were set. Linda O'Brien gave an update on progress at the swimming pool and the arbor grounds. She asked for volunteers to scrape and paint the pool ladders and add gravel to the arbor grounds. We still need a chairperson for Fort Clark Days 2023. All committee chairs are signed up. All we need, all we, also we need persons to apply for vice president and for secretary for the two-year term starting January 2023. Helena will submit an application for the Rio Grande Community Grant to request money for a contract compactor baler for the Recycle Center. Come join us June 11th, 2023, for the next Community Council meeting. Kathy Worm, edited by Helena McBride. Thank you. Okay. All right, so now to uh, old or unfinished business. We have one item. Uh, that item is the wastewater treatment area. Um, we don't really, or the, the lease for that. Um, 
we don't have a huge update. We do have uh, the attorney from the city and the utility uh, that will meet with us in executive session today, and I believe representatives from those two entities will be here as well. So hopefully we will have a lease to discuss in front of you at the next meeting that we will walk through in a detailed fashion so that you can all understand as to what we are contracting ourselves to with these two parties on our property. Uh, discussion items, so golf, uh, golf carts that use ATV type tires. Uh, that was kind of a, a, a round um, a description of the conversation that we, we were trying to have. Um, but there did, does need to be some consideration over time uh, on the golf carts and their use on the trails and how they, uh, how they tear them up. And what is a golf cart versus an ATV? You know, we do have an ATV area. Um, that is relegated to equipment that's more powerful and faster and um, this was just to open up the discussion um, about that so that we could start to understand as we move into our new software system how we will register um, those vehicles and make sure that we're, we have the proper vehicles in the proper places. Um, we, you know, we have eight or ten miles of trails and that's a lot of trails to keep up if every time you know we're going out there with gas powered ATVs and whatnot and tearing stuff up so uh, just something that we need to consider so I'll kind of open that up for discussion around um, what people have seen uh, and, and what we want to do going forward. Yes, sir. I've seen some dirt bikes back in Red Bridge Park. Right which is that that's I think one of the things that we want to relegate to the ATV more off-road area versus you know having those on the trails where people are walking, uh, biking, riding their horses, or using their golf carts. Yeah. Yes, sir. I'm gonna, I'll stand up so my voice will carry over here. So I do have some concerns about that at the end of the discussion. What is an ATV type tire? Sir, can you come to the mic, please? Can, if you like. Thank you. I'll, I'll answer the question as, as you're coming in the sense of time. Um, forgive the title, it, it's not really, that. that's not the, the ATV tire is not the absolute concern, it's the power of the, and that's what we're here to open the discussion about is, how are we going to decide? Is it gonna be a CC thing? Is it gonna be a gas powered versus battery powered? How do we put this together so that the membership's happy with the goal that we're trying to get to, which is not destroying the trails and using the proper equipment out there versus uh, an ATV, which should be in an ATV park. That's the, the true concern. So but continue, please. All right. So, so that was one of the questions, because that's one of those things like fine art. Right. right. I know fine art when I see it. But other people look at that and go, I don't think so. So you know, if we're going to do something like that, we're going to have to have a very specific definition. Yes. The next question becomes who enforces it. That's more rhetorical. I'm, I'm providing discussion Thank you. topics for you. Um, I had heard that there was also talk about fines. I don't know if that's accurate or not, but if there are fines, who assesses them, who collects them, and where do they go? How are they used? Those are things I think we need to think about. Um, and I'm, I haven't been on every trail on the fort. I'm fairly new here. My name is Curtis, by the way. Some of you have seen me, some of you haven't. Um, but in the nine months or so that I've been here, I have not noticed uh, trail erosion and stuff being caused by uh, golf carts and things. Now, there are some areas that when it's wet, people do drive through and that does cause an issue. But I think currently the, the security force does try to block off some areas if they have water. So we already have some mitigation things in effect. Um, the uh, other thing is that um, I have seen some areas where rain and stuff has carried things off and those haven't been repaired. Does the fort currently have a maintenance schedule for the trails or any kind of a, of a maintenance program? No. We don't? No. Okay. So, all right. So my, my thought there is that maybe some of the erosion or some of the damage that we're seeing may very well just be the fact that we, don't, we aren't repairing it regularly and it's just erosion. Um, so basically my concerns I've already talked about the arbitrary nature of ATV type tire, and you said that was kind of just a way to start the discussion. So, um, I have seen some ATVs on the area, so we already have problems with that. Uh, I don't know how you're going to stop people from having tires you don't like if that's where we end up going. 
Uh, my other concern uh, is that if we decide that we're going to regulate tires, uh, it can be almost $600 to change a set of golf cart tires. And the, a lot of the newer golf carts, ones that I would buy from a golf cart manufacturer, come with more aggressive type tires, whether we want to call them ATV or not. So somebody that buys one now has the expense, if we go this route, of trying to update brand new tires to tires that meet with whatever approval. So these are all concerns that I had. Um, so I, I think that we, we need to um, definitely have the discussion. You mentioned something about licensing golf carts, registering them. Are we currently required to? So do currently, that? it is in our rules that you should register your your golf cart or your vehicle, your motor, your vehicle that you're operating on the port. We do not have a system in place. You know, that's part of what we've been doing over the last 12 months is bringing in a system to get off of the black system and be able to handle more um, appropriate things for now, right? And um, that would be part of the thing that would go in that system. Yes. Okay. And the attendant fees and things would have to be spelled out? Absolutely, and the fees would come before the membership. I mean, this is just to open the conversation of how are we going to get there. Um, you know, one thing that's been, in the last few months, we've really kind of taken a big step forward, and, and I really appreciate what the membership's been doing. Um, people have kind of taken hold of different areas and really worked to bring those to fruition and bring them back to the board so that we can bring it to the membership and, and make a decision. And unfortunately, you've almost volunteered yourself for this position. <laughs> <laughs> so you kind of walked into that one. So. No, I, I'll, I will certainly uh, be part of the dialogue. Um, I, and I think my overall comment would be that, that let's be careful that we don't adopt a solution in search of a problem. We're, we're talking about wear and tear on the trails is it caused by ATVs? Is it caused by golf carts? Is it caused by motorbikes? I don't know that we know. I would like we to don't have database. Yeah, He's made a comment first. You recognize him, I doubt. Yeah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Curtis. Thanks, Thanks Curtis. That was great. Those are all uh, concerns and, yeah. and conversations. Thank the, you the damage us. to the roads was caused by water. It's the rain. And what was it three years ago when it rained so hard you could hardly get through the uh, all of the various trails because there's so much water standing on it. Where it's dry like this, there's very little damage to the roads. Thank you. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Before you get too involved with Heather saying you need to learn the difference between an ATV, UTV, golf cart, toys. The UTV is a utility vehicle. You can put different tires on them all. My Ranger's out here, street legal. It's got S and B sign. It's licensed. It's got all the safety features. We <coughs> use it to save our back. We don't go out and tear up trails, but our tires are less aggressive than a lot of the golf carts. And I've been told I can't go certain places. Why? I'm not out there tearing up. I see these little. I don't even know what you call them. I don't even call them an ATV. Yes. They're little, they're not motorcycles, they're little three-wheelers or four-wheelers. They go by, they're not obeying us. They're probably not of age to drive. There's a lot of problems. So before you get too far into it, you better learn designation of the vehicle. And that's a big concern. Right? So, And if anyone wants to look at mine, because you have mules, Kawasaki, Polaris Rangers, and you've got all kinds of brands of things. But let's, above all, keep everybody safe out there. Because if we're not being safe, nothing's going to work. Absolutely. But we've got to get the right label on the right machine I for the agree. right tires for the right use. I absolutely agree. Thank you for those comments. And that is one of the things that over the last, I don't know, six months we've been working on the, the accessibility of the trails. You'll notice that uh, you'll see gates that are put up and that's been a big step forward uh, that's been headed by maintenance and, and Mr. Peterson. So we, this is a, a long process, you know, um, over time things happen and um, we don't necessarily keep our, our rules and our regulations and our information to the membership up to date. And so this is just an effort to start the conversation, to move to a more safe and, and um, 
enjoyable environment here on the port. One more, one more question. Uh, same subject. Uh, the uh, on the golf course, are the type of tires limited as the type of tire you can use? Right now, the not currently. Right now, not currently. They should be. But that would be something that would also be a part of this discussion. Would be okay. So on the golf on the golf course, how and and what is the appropriate place for the type of vehicle, the type of tire, the type of power. So that, that that's all something that needs to be to be looked at over time. So I think we have a, a, a good starting point on many of these conversations. So we'll take notes and uh, kind of keep y'all up to date as we go. Like this is not a, a an agenda <coughs> item to take a vote on or anything like that. It's simply to open the discussion. So I appreciate every yes, sir. I got a question. Uh, when you talk about registrating registering these uh, vehicles, what's on your mind about that? Registering with who? who with the you? Ford. Oh, with the Ford? Okay. Yes, sir. Well, that's already available. Yes, sir, it is. Um, it's just currently <coughs> not... you got to register with them. Not required? Or no, not, it is required. It's not oh, it okay. It's, it's not it's enforced. It's kind of like everybody is supposed to show their rabies vaccinations for their pets and register their pet every year. I don't think many people do that either. Okay, so. that was my only question. Yeah, and again, the process is coming. And the city just went through this entire situation, and you know they, they're working through that, so I'm sure we'll, we'll talk to them and see what the kinks that they, they have. Um, one of the discussions, I just want to throw it out there so that everyone's aware yeah. was trail fees yeah. so I you know I think the membership needs to think about you know because we discussed whether we should have fees or not. yes sir I just have a quick comment on that uh, as I understand the, the trails are part of our member benefit along with the adult center so I don't want to be feed to death. My, my assessments keep going up on minuscule, perhaps, and I realize there are rising costs and <coughs> things that the Ford has to address because when fuel costs go up, everything else goes up. <coughs> but I don't want to just start applying fees to things as a way to get better. And trail fees, I think, are the wrong way to go because we are already <coughs> paying for those through our assessment every year. Well, every month, in my case, because I pay it on a Base. So I, I would be against any kind of trail structure. Right, and and the thought on the trail fee structure was that you would not be, uh, you would not have to have a trail fee to use your feet or your bike or anything like that. And when and when trails were um, put into your membership, there were not readily available golf carts that could go on trails because they had three wheels. You know, in '71, you know, when the trail fees were put into your membership. Now, over time. When additional uh, vehicles and modes of transportation were added to the general population, there was no update to the uh, assessment of how the, the trails would be maintained or anything. And again, just the discussion point, yes, these you know, have been discussed. Um, you know, if, if we have a, a, an expense, we have to find a way to pay for it. And if we want to relegate it to come out of the pool that's already empty, then I guess we can, but we'll continue to talk about that. Yes, ma'am. Just something to add to the discussion. Difference between trails and driving on common area. I mean, we have very short common area in our backyard. People will go through there with a cart, creating a new road. Why? There are all kinds of trails all over to go on that don't need to go on the common areas. Look at the area by Los Morris. If you go in you know, towards Redbridge, there's trails all over the place that have been cut because people are going on the common area. So just something to add to the discussion. Thank you. Well, I think that was a good start. Um, so we have community council's proposal to repair the adult center. Do we have that? Is there documentation I've provided? Okay. 
Okay, uh, we've heard about this proposal in the last, you know, in, in two reports. Um, I think that this is something that we probably need to review, like kind of boots on the ground, um, and take a look at these pictures and uh, kind of come back to community council. I, I don't know if there's any questions currently. I don't think that this, the last, this didn't come in until Wednesday um, or later. So uh, we haven't really had time to evaluate. So do we want to kind of keep this in our mind? And I, I don't have a lot of discussion on it at this point. To next. Is, that, is that fair for everyone? No. But right now, the community council is offering $4,000 to the board to fix it. No. 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 That's your start. What was that again, please? Sorry. You need 35, 32 to 35,000 to repair the HVAC systems there, and you will need a minimum of 16,000 to abate the asbestos that's in the court. And that's your start. Okay, so um, what, what the proposal was actually proposing was on the second floor to work on painting rooms, painting hallways, painting ceilings work on um, walls where there is some um, cracking and one picture there is a ceiling um, that is coming down a little bit as well also one of the bathrooms upstairs is um, is out of order we don't know what's wrong with that bathroom um, and we'll have to get some more information on it replacing doors um, that are not there um, replacing the broken window panes, um, cleaning the window panes on one of the pictures you will see where the paint's actually um, flaking off um, because the window panes have been painted, they're metal, they should be cleaned, just cleaned and then whatever needs to be done to preserve those. Um, replace window treatments. We don't have any idea the cost, we just know that we have about $2,000. All of the work will be done by volunteers. And the idea then is then that we can house people up in those rooms upstairs um, for for Clark days, for small groups that are coming in that um, we can't put into the hotel or someplace else, but they would have working bathrooms. We haven't um, spoken to maintenance. This just all came up last Saturday, so uh, the the reason why you got that so late was. Um, just because it was last Saturday that we decided on this and we wanted to get something into you. Um, haven't spoken to maintenance to find out what's wrong with the bathrooms, with the plumbing. We know that we don't want to change the bathroom floors because they look period correct. They would need to be cleaned. They're very similar to the bathroom floors that are in Dickman Hall, but these would be the actual original, whereas Dickman Hall um, tried to, to maintain that historical aspect. We don't know if it has to be painted white or if we can actually use colors in the different rooms. Um, ceiling fans, we know that there's no air conditioning, but in February we probably don't need air conditioning. But if we were to put in ceiling fans, that would allow for some movement of air. So those are the kinds of things that we've been tossing about. Um, and that was the proposal. Thank you for yes. putting that all together, especially on, on such a short a timeline. And we'll uh, we'll take a look at it over Absolutely. the next month and then you know have some feedback on, on how we want to move forward. Okay. Some of the thought on it was moving as we move forward also. Some of the thought on it is that the um, that one of the one of the things that we do with community council with the five oh one C three is to preserve, protect and promote the historic um, district. But as um, Mr. Bitter said earlier, the historic preservation has to focus on the outside of the building. There's really nothing to do work on the inside of the building. So in lieu of giving all of the money to the historic preservation, we wanted to work on the inside of the building to help um, preserve on the inside and also make it something usable for the fort. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And, to, and to save the money on seven rooms, or whatever it is at the fort. Oh, Jerry and Fort Clark. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you. Okay, so over the last month, uh, we had two votes that were done via email. 
Uh, one, we discussed briefly in the last meeting just to kind of prepare everyone for the expenditure that would come. Uh, and Mr. Peterson uh, mentioned it in his report. Uh, we voted to procure a dump truck. Um, that, that item was approved. And we also had an email vote uh, to move forward with the spring repairs uh, that you currently see going on down at the uh, pool area. So both of those were approved and both of those were done via email votes uh, this last month. Any questions about those or any other comments? Uh, the agenda items, uh, consider approval of the ERC deposit. Um, I'll open that up for a second. So ERC is the uh, Employee Retention Credit. It is a program administered through the IRS. Um, it has been extended six, five or six quarters now. Basically, there is a dollar figure associated with every employee that you were able to retain during those quarters. Um, it could be very lucrative for the port um, if we can qualify and maintain that. We were approached by a company who works through other uh, employee benefits for the port. I think we have a 30 plus year relationship with this company. Um, and they actually go out and do the documentation, submit the uh, proposal to the federal government, and then uh, kind of administer that process for a fee. And I think that's what we're discussing here is the, the fee that they would take um, in order to do that. So, oh, so there is an upfront cost. I believe the upfront cost is it's a deposit. I believe it's two thousand dollars or fifteen hundred dollars. $2,500? So $2,500, that is a deposit. If we receive the credit, that goes towards their fee. If we do not receive the credit, that is refunded to us. So there is no expense if we do not procure the funds. Discussion? What was the percentage again? I believe the percentage was 15%. 15%. My only question was, have we reached out to um, our CPA to see, you know, we, have we talked to anybody else about, you know, is 15% reasonable? Um, going through the, all the stuff that's in there, I'm sorry, there's so much. Um, it's complicated, but it's straightforward at the same time. I mean, the company that reached out to us is a CPA firm, although they do specialize in that. I would just like to see us check one other, whether it's our CPA or the employer was twenty percent that so was given the CPA had a return or had said anything about it. Yeah. So, but we did reach out to them. We reached out to them, we just hadn't received the reply or I hadn't read all that. We could potentially qualify for three hundred and eight thousand. Uh, that I mean it's it's up for debate as to how much the we would qualify for. If you go out, it's very difficult to read on the IRS site because it's been updated so many times. Like I said, they've added it, they've extended it through five quarters. So every time they extend it for another quarter, they change the website on the IRS and the documentation and the form and all that. So it, it's a continuous process, um, but it's somewhere in the neighborhood of eight to fifteen thousand dollars per employee per quarter um, that. Yeah, per quarter that you retain. So it, it, it could be a very large number uh, in the grand scheme of things. And I did not get the impression that our CPA people do this. Right. So in my experience in working with these programs, especially around COVID relief and, and that, um, it takes a back channel to get a lot of this stuff through. Um, I personally have worked through some of the different programs and I've had to use not my CPA, but a specific CPA that is working towards that specific program. Obviously, the group that we're, you know, has approached us, uh, they have a 96% conversion rate, I believe is what their documentation says. So they have the channel, whatever channel that is, to document things properly. Um, we had one other proposal, 20% is what we were told by another group, and then our CPA hasn't um, responded in, in that fashion to do this. So. 
I would think that if the, the market is anywhere between 15 and 20 percent, um, and they were doing that for 